Praise the Lord. Show me the people I said, Praise the Lord. What a great day to be with you. I said, It's a great day to be with you. And what a wonderful church building you have. Wonderful. Everybody say wonderful. wonderful. And I pray that the blessings of the Lord will abide with you every time you come to worship here in Jesus' name. Special programs, regular programs, whatever it is, the blessings of God will be here. And uh, those who are outside, how are you? On my left, on my right, how are you? You are fine, and the beauty of God will always be your life and family. And uh, I know that many of you are here today because they said, uh, my Father in the Lord is coming for a special Bible study. And also, you know, your pastor, it's also back, and I know you are happy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know you love him. I want you to keep on loving him. And hearing the word of God, and the word of God will be a blessing to your life in Jesus' name. How many are here today to study the Bible? Where are you? God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus. We well, thank you for this glorious day. Thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your wonderful people here. Thank you for the pastors and the leaders and the workers. Everybody here making this world to keep alive. I pray, Lord, the life of Christ will be, will be radiant in everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray that today you open our eyes to behold wonderful things out of your word in Jesus' name. Bless every one of us. And all the people who are receiving the message everywhere, we pray that you bless them too in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. And we're looking at 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. And we're looking at it from verse 6. 1 John chapter 5 verse 6. It says, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. It is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. Come to verse 11. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Come to verse 13. In verse 13, these things I write unto you that believe on the name of the son of God, that ye may know that we have eternal life. And that she may believe on the name of the Son of God. That's the passage we're looking at today. And I believe as you look at this word, all the blessing in this passage will be in your life in Jesus' name. The passage talks about Jesus Christ. Jesus that came in the flesh. He came, he was born in Bethlehem. And he came, he lived a life, a normal life, a righteous life, a pure life, a sinless life. And because of that sinless life, being our redeemer, he also went to the cross of Calvary. And he died for us, died for you and died for me. And because he died on the cross of Calvary, he has given us eternal life. And as many as believe on his name, that eternal life becomes yours. And if you have not received that life, eternal life, the life of God and the life of Christ and the life, beautiful life, wonderful life, blessed life, will live for all eternity. That life will be yours tonight in Jesus' name. Because as you turn away from your sin and you believe on him who died for you, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, all your sins will take away. 
all your guilt will take away and every power of sin it will break from your life in Jesus name tonight we're looking at this study and the topic is eternal life through the son of god eternal life through the son of god you'll find uh, in the passage i've read to you you'll find those words eternal life eternal life very important hold that firm because without this we're nothing in the sight of god eternal life and then you hold the other part to the son of god bring everything together and we have eternal life how do we have the life of god in us how do we have salvation how do we have this radiant life this righteous life and this purified and purged life it is through the son of god the lord jesus christ look at that chapter 5 again i'm reading from verse 11 it says this is the record that god has given us eternal life and this life, that life, eternal life, is in his son. Eternal life in his son. And so if you're going to have that eternal life, there's only one way. You come to the son of God. You leave all your sin behind. You leave all your selfishness behind, all your self-centeredness. You leave all that behind. You say, Lord Jesus, I come. Because I know you are the author of life and the giver of life. And you are the only one that can make my life what it ought to be. And as you come to him like that, he gives eternal life. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, he tells us still about that eternal life. Because that's why John wrote, John the Beloved. That's the reason he gave us this epistle. He tells us these things. Have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know? It says, I want you to know this. Whatever else you know, if you don't know this one, your life will be miserable. If you know this one, then the rest will follow. It says that she may know that she have eternal life some people say we cannot tell we cannot know we have eternal life until when we go to the great beyond but here john the beloved says you can know by faith you can know as you believe on the lord jesus christ it says that she may know that she have eternal life and that ye may believe, you keep on believing on the name of the Son of God. In fact, as you look at the epistle of 1 John, you're going to find from chapter 1 that this or the reason he wrote. And this is what he wants you to get. If you have all the other knowledge about this, about that, about everything else, and you don't have this knowledge, John the beloved said, that's not complete. That's not enough. You must have. There is knowledge that eternal life is available through the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at chapter 1. Look at chapter 1 and in verse 2. It says, for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life. You see what John is saying? He's saying he came to show you. You know why you came to the Bible study today? The Lord wanted us to show you that eternal life which was for the Father and was manifested unto us. It was for the Father, eternal life. And then Christ came. He manifested it. He revealed it. It will be revealed to you in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 2. Chapter 2, talking about eternal life. Verse 25. Chapter 2, verse 25. And this is the promise that he has promised us. Even, tell me, eternal life. It says, that's what he has promised us. You are coming to the Lord. You say, what will the Lord give me? Has the Lord promised anything for me in that Bible, in the Word of God? All that we're studying tonight, has God promised me anything? Oh yes, I can tell you. According to that chapter 2 verse 25, he has promised us, tell me what it is, eternal life. And that promise will come to take the promise from the Lord. Once you come to the Lord, oh yes, Lord, I come. 
just as I am, without any excuse, I come. I look to Calvary. I look to the Lamb of God. I know that he is the one that can take my sins away. I know he is the one that can beautify my life or the life of heaven and the life of Christ and the life of God, the life of grace and the life of godliness. And then he gives you the fulfillment of that promise eternal life. Are there people that do not have eternal life? Of course, yes. Let me show you. Chapter 3. In chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 15. Chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 15. You know, people may say, everybody after all can have it because we're the creatures of God. And us, because he created us, everybody of course can have eternal life. Not at all. Yes, we can have. Yes, we can have. But not everybody possesses that eternal life. We're looking at First John chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 15. It says, whosoever, look at this now, whosoever, you know what whosoever means? That means anybody, a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, a church goer, anyone, whosoever, the person might even be bearing what they call a Christian name. But if he doesn't have eternal life, you can tell. Look at verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Now we can tell those who have hatred, those who have bitterness, and those who have that thing in their heart. So and so did this to me. I'm going to hurt him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to do this or that. It says, you know, that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. How do we have eternal life? Then we come out of that hatred. Not only the hatred, out of our sin, out of our evil, out of anything that is not according to the will of God, according to the word of God. When we come out of that, the Bible calls that repentance. And then we rely on the Lord and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the moment we believe, eternal life will come. If you have not got it tonight, you'll get it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 20. Chapter 5 of 1 John, verse 20. It says, and we know, he wants us to have assurance of this. He wants us to have confidence. He wants us to have trust. He wants us to really believe. And when you believe, you really have. It is that faith that connects us with the Almighty God. It is that faith that connects us with the knowledge that eternal life can be ours. And tonight, it will be yours in Jesus' name. It says in that chapter 5 verse 20, it says, and we know, not only John is saying, I'm not the only one that knows about eternal life. I'm not the only one that possesses that possess eternal life it says we all believers all those who trust in the lord jesus christ and have confidence and faith in him and we know that the son of god is come yes he came and then he died for you and he died for me we know that the son of god is come and he has given unto us an understanding that we may know that him that is true and we are in him that is true and then he says even his son jesus christ look at what follows there and this is the true god and tell me eternal life eternal life and then you'll find out that he mentions the son that's the son of god a number of times in the passage we're looking at today i'm coming back to first john chapter five and then we're looking at verse six you'll see it says this is he that came by water and blood it says even jesus christ even jesus christ that's the one that grants us that eternal life his name is Jesus. He is the Lamb of God. He is the sacrifice. He is the one that shed his blood so that through the cleansing of that blood, you will be saved, you'll be converted, and then you will know, I believe on the very Son of God, and I have eternal life. Look at verse 9. It says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater 
For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. His son. That's Jesus Christ, the son of God. That's what we say we're talking about. Eternal life through the son of God. Look at verse 10. He that believeth on the son of God. That's he, that's him right there. Because it takes that faith, not just that, well, I believe, I believe. Uh -uh. You must believe definitely in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Because it is faith in the Son, as Savior, as Lord, as Redeemer, as the one that died for us on the cross of Calvary. That's what gives us that salvation, that eternal life. He that believes on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of, who is this? His son. You see every time he mentions that and he says, I'm not talking about any other person. I'm talking about his son. We're looking at uh, verse 11. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in, tell me, his son. And so that assures you then there's connection. Between eternal life and the Son of God. Connection between eternal life and the Son. And it is only the Son, only the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, that grants us this eternal life. And today, I know you want to believe on that Son of God, on Jesus Christ. And as you believe, eternal life will be yours in Jesus' name. As we look at the study tonight, eternal life through the Son of God. There are three things we're going to consider now. Number one, number one, the threefold witness to our eternal Lord. Jesus Christ, yes, is the lamp of God. Jesus Christ is even referred to as the lion of the tribe of Judah and is referred to as our Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior. He is the eternal Lord. He said, number one, the threefold witness to our eternal lord number two the timeless witness to our eternal liberator he is our lord and he is a liberator he's the one that comes to break the chain of sin and he comes to remove that pressure and that oppression hold of sin away from our lives and he liberates us and he sets us free and he delivers us. He forgives us. He also sets us free. That's why he is our liberator. And it's not just a temporary liberation. He gives us this lifetime liberation. Because he's able to do that. He is our eternal liberator. Number three is the treasured word of eternal life. The word we treasure. The word we appreciate. The word we believe. The word we take in. It's like honey and the honeycomb. And we treasure it. The treasured word of eternal life. We're coming to number one. Number one is a threefold witness to our eternal Lord. Let's come to chapter five of First John. First John chapter five. I'm reading from verse six. First John chapter 5, verse 6. It says, this is he. It's talking about somebody. This is he that came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ. What's that? This is he that came by water and came by blood. Even Jesus Christ. What do you mean by that, John? You see, there were people at that time. They said, oh, Christ, he was spirit. He only came in the spirit. He was not man like us. But no, John is saying he came in the flesh. And when he said he came in the flesh, he said, you know that because he came by water and the blood. Do you remember when they threw the spear, when they threw the spear, when they threw it at his side, then water and blood came out to show that he became man. He was human. He became like one of us. He became flesh. And that's why John said, he that does not believe that Jesus came in the flesh 
is not born again, is not a child of God, but he who believes that Jesus came in the flesh by water and by blood and that he sacrificed himself for us and he bore all our pain, he bore all our punishment, he bore all our sin on the cross of Calvary. He said that's the one that is actually a child of God. He came by blood, he came by water. He said not by water only, but by water and blood. And he says, and the spirit also. The spirit beareth witness because he is the spirit of truth. The spirit beareth witness and he is the spirit of truth. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ had said. If you look at John, look at John chapter 15, you will see that the Lord Jesus Christ had said, the spirit will come, the comforter. The spirit of truth and because he always declares the truth and he always proclaims the truth he said when he comes he is going to be a witness of the fact that i came in the flesh and then i died on calvary and i provided salvation for everyone and because look at this god bore witness from heaven and Jesus Christ bore witness of himself and the Holy Spirit also bore witness and so you have the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit bearing witness that this is our Savior and this is our Lord. John chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 26. John chapter 15, reading from verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you, from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of truth, and everything he says is always true. Everything he says is also factual. He says the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he, the Spirit, he, the Holy Ghost, shall testify of me, will bear witness of me. In verse 27, and ye also shall be a witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. And that's what John is doing here. John had been with the Lord from the beginning, from the beginning of his ministry. And then the Bible witness said, we touched him, we felt him, we knew him, we handled him, and we know he came by water and by blood. We know that he came like flesh, like us, that the Son of God became the Son of Man, so that he'll become the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, and and die for our sins. And John said, I bear record, I bear witness. And then he said, the Holy Ghost too is bearing record and bearing witness. Come to First John chapter 5. And here we're looking at verse 7. Now First John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Think about that. Here is John telling us, and here is the scripture telling us, here is the word of God telling us. Some people say, I don't understand that. It's like, you know, a baby in the mother, not born yet, not born into this world yet. And then some, maybe she hears a particular sound. There's father, there's mother. And then there are brothers and sisters. And the little child inside, the mother said, I don't understand that she cannot understand. I was saying that you are there and there is a father responsible for that. There is a mother responsible for that. And then there are children that came before you and we call everyone family. Father, part of the family. Mother, part of the family. You, you also, number three, part of the family. And the little baby inside, the mother said, I don't understand. How can she understand? Because she is still in the mother, in conception. But when he is born into the world, and then sees daddy, and sees mommy, and sees himself, okay, we are one family. That's what the Lord is telling us. Uh, until you get to heaven, and then you see the father, and you see the son, the son of God Jesus Christ and then you see the Holy Ghost and yet it's one God it's when you get there you will understand but let us look at this it says there are three that bear record where in heaven and then it says number one tell me 
the father number two tell me the word that when it says the word that is jesus christ you remember the scripture the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and full of truth that's jesus christ and then the holy ghost that the holy spirit and it says these three are one the father the Son, the Holy Spirit. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. The three personalities in the Godhead, in the Trinity. We're looking at Matthew chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16. And Jesus, that's Jesus the Son of God. That's Jesus, the word that became flesh. And Jesus, when he was baptized, came, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, and lo, the, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God. You see that? Jesus coming out of the water. And then the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Here's the third person I'm going to speak in verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Can you see in those two verses there? They will find Jesus, that's the Son of God. They will find the Spirit of God like a dove lightning upon him, number two. And then number three, the Father speaking from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son. And so you understand, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I'm reading to you from chapter 17 of Matthew. Matthew chapter 17. And here we're looking at uh, verse 5. Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. It says in verse 5, while he yet spake, does Peter speak in this on the Mount of Transfiguration? Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son. You see that? The father speaking and saying, this, referring to Jesus, is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Hear ye him. Everybody say, hear ye him. Yes. You will hear him. Yes. I said, you will hear him. Yes. What has he said? What has he said concerning what we are talking about today? Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, hear ye him, hear ye him. He said, there is father, hear ye him. He said, there is son, hear ye him. He said, there is the Holy Spirit, hear ye him. Look at Matthew chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Look at this. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Hear ye him. Hear ye him. There's Father. There is Son. There is the Holy Ghost. And that's what John the Beloved is saying. He's saying there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father. The word, that is the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. If you come to Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 13. Second Corinthians chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. Look at this. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's Jesus Christ. And the love of God, that's God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Spirit be with you all. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Here we find the Father, here we find the Son, here we find the Holy Ghost. And so we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And it says, and these three are one. What does that mean? And these three are one. 
You know, sometimes uh, when you look at that and uh, when you look at that word one, you say, I don't understand. Don't you understand? That's what I said about the father and the mother and the child. The father, the mother, and the child. And those three, they make up how many families? Tell me out loud. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and it way shall be one flesh. There's still one, even though you have father and son and uh, a mother, there's still one. Look at uh, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. We're reading from Vastachi. John, the gospel according to St. John. We're reading from chapter 10. And we're looking at Vastachi. Vastachi tells us. It says, I and my father tell me I won. The father in heaven. And Jesus Christ, the Son here on earth, and he said, I and my Father are one. Father, I'm, ba I'm back now to this earth. I'm back to the family. Father traveled to America. Mother still here in our city. And the Son over there in South Africa. Father far away, mother over here, son over there. Are they still one? Yes, they're still one. I and my father are one. The father in heaven and the son of God here on earth and then he sends the Holy Ghost unto us and the three bear record and these three are one. We're coming back to First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 7. And there are three that bear record in heaven. Verse 7. And the, fa the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three tell me are one. Verse 8. And there are three that bear record in earth. The Spirit, and the water and the blood and these three agree in one and so we come to understand it's like a mystery and many people they want to unravel that mystery they want to say explain everything to me well they explain what the word of god says is the truth but you see that alone does not uh, make you have eternal life you must still believe you must still believe that jesus christ is the son of god and that jesus christ died for you he gave his life for you look at uh, first uh, corinthians chapter 13 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, tell me what follows. I am nothing. There are people that go out, they want to argue. They want to win an argument. And they want to argue with somebody in another religion. And they want to say, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then they argue and argue and argue. And they may win the argument. There is no argument in this. If you don't have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if your sins have not been forgiven, if you have not looked at Calvary, if you have not looked at the Son of God that taketh the sins of the whole world away, even if you win an argument, if I understand all mysteries and understand and have all knowledge, if I don't have salvation, if I don't have the love of God, if I don't have eternal life, if I don't have the confidence and the assurance that all my sins are taken away, understanding all the mysteries still makes you nothing. And so to become somebody in the kingdom of God, we must understand, yes, we understand the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And yet we must look to Calvary and look at the one that took away our sins. And the moment you say, yes, Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. He'll take all your sins away. 
and then you have the assurance here the spirit of God will be a witness in your heart all your sins are taken away and then you are free it sets you free for if the son shall make you free tell me you shall be free indeed we're coming to point number two now point number two the timeless witness to our eternal liberator our eternal liberator we're still talking about jesus christ jesus christ is our lord our eternal lord jesus christ is the lamb of god that takes away the sins of the world lord of lords and king of kings and then he's also our liberator he liberates us he sets us free he cuts away the cords of sin out of our lives and it makes us to be totally free so that we can be ready for heaven. Look at this, First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, we're reading from verses 9 and 10. First John chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. The timeless witness to our eternal liberator. Verse 9 if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. What's John saying here? He's saying that when somebody tells you about uh, what you don't know, yet you understand that that is true. That's the very son of God. And because he's the very son of God, he can give you this salvation. And can give you this eternal life. And because you believe the witness of man. Here is the witness of God now coming to you. And the witness, the witness of God is greater than the witness of man. Look at this. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Look up here for a moment. I want to tell you, there is a country that is called China. You accept that? I said you accept that? Have you been there? No, but I told you. And other people told you, we believe the witness of man. And we accept that. And then I say, there is a place that is called, I call that name. And then I said, I've been there. Have you been there? You say, no. Do you believe there's a place like that? I said, yes. I said, why do you believe? Because you are telling us. And because witness to it, that's why I accept. Well, Jesus Christ came. And he said, there's a place called heaven. Thank God I believe. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Behold, I go to, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Am I sure? I said, are you sure? Because he bore witness to that. If we believe the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. Look at verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. He has given us the witness, he has given us the testimony that eternal life, salvation, only comes through Jesus Christ. And because we know the testimony of God, the witness of God, is greater than that of man, that's why we believe. Look at verse 10. It says, he... That believeth on the Son of God has the witness in him in himself. And he that believeth not God has made him a liar. Look up here. If somebody calls God a liar, can they be saved? Somebody calls God a liar, can he have eternal life? Somebody calls God a liar, can he have uh, can he go to heaven? No. God said, Jesus is my only begotten son. And if somebody says, no, I don't believe, he's calling God a liar. God says, this is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And somebody says, no, uh, I don't believe that. I don't accept that. He calls God a liar. And because of that, he cannot have salvation. You call God a liar, you cannot have that salvation. You don't know what you're doing. You say, I believe in God, I believe in God. What God has said, what the Father has said concerning 
his only begotten son, that he sent him to this world to die for you and to take your sins away and to wash you whiter than snows. I don't believe, I don't believe. You make God a liar. But when God says, whosoever shall call on my name, I will save, I will forgive, and say, yes, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, then you are saved. But those who say they don't believe, they make God a liar, they cannot be saved. Look at that verse again. He that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in him. And he that believeth not God has made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. He believeth not the record that God gave of his son. You'll find those uh, words, the witness of God. You'll find it in verse 9. The witness of God. You'll find it in verse 10. And then you'll find the people that do not believe that witness. They call God. They make God a liar. They cannot be saved. And the father has given the testimony that Jesus Christ is Lord and Jesus Christ is Savior. Let's, let's look at what that does for you. When you believe that Jesus Christ was sent by the Father to take your sins away and to wash you whiter than snow and to bring eternal life unto you. First, uh, we're looking at gospel according to St. John chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 16. John chapter 3 and we're reading here from verse 16 and it's important for you to know that as you believe as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ so salvation comes eternal life comes it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son he calls him his son. He calls him his son. His only begotten son. You must believe that. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have, have everlasting life. As you believe on the Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, I believe. You might be the greatest sinner in town. You might be the greatest criminal in the country, but you say, I believe I cannot save myself. I'm helpless, I'm powerless, but I believe that Jesus died for me. That's why Jesus came. And the moment you believe, you have eternal life in Jesus' name. For God sent not his son, verse 17, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The world through him might be saved. That's why Jesus came so that you will have salvation. Look at verse 18. He that believeth on the Son is not condemned. He that believeth on the Son is not condemned. What does that mean? When we die, we'll appear before God and he will sit at the judgment seat. And when God sits at the judgment seat, and then you come, they say, what's your name? Then you proudly say, this is my name. All right. How do you think we should accept you to heaven? Ah, because I was a good man. I was a great woman. I gave money to the beggars, and I went to church, and I did this, and I did that. They said, any other thing? Well, I was, uh, I was very, very good. And then, uh, yeah, I about believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh -uh, I don't know about that one. That person is condemned. But the person that came, and the person that will get there at the judgment seat of God and say, nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Rock of ages, clear for me. Let me hide myself in thee. And then the father is asking, you want to get to heaven? How do you know you are going to be accepted into heaven? I believe on Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died for me. He took all my sins away, and now he gave me eternal life. They say, come on in, you will get to heaven. I said you will get to heaven. But the people that say that they have some good works, they did this and they did that, they'll be condemned. Look at that verse 18 again. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but 
He that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He is a liberator. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is the one sent to take us away from sin and to take sin away from us. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 26. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 26. It says, Unto you first, God, having raised up his Son, Jesus. You see here, his Son. His son, everywhere you go, as we talk about salvation, as we talk about eternal life, as we talk about forgiveness, as we talk about redemption, it's referred to as a son. And it is this son alone that can turn you away from sin. Unto you falls, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Only the Son of God can do that. Only Jesus Christ can do that and turn you away from all your sin, from all your iniquity. Romans chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 10. Romans chapter 5, and we're looking at verse 10. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. For if when we were enemies, that's what we were before we met Christ. That's what every human being has been before meeting the Lord. It says, so we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of, tell me, his son. You see, all the time, every time, if anybody is going to be reconciled with God, anybody is going to find favor with God, anybody is going to receive grace from God, it must be through the son of God. It says, we are reconciled unto him through the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall, have, we shall be saved by his life. Saved by his life. I pray that that salvation will be yours. And that freedom will be yours. And remember, it's only in his son. In his son. And when you believe, you know, there's not religion. There are people that have religion. They have this religion, that religion. That doesn't bring salvation. But when you believe in his son, that's what brings the salvation. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 3. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. Look at this. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending who his own son you see that all the time all the time it is a son and that's a, the moment you say yes i believe i believe there's nobody like jesus there's no other savior only jesus there's no other redeemer only jesus there's no other liberator only jesus it says god sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, look at verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Galatians chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, here we're looking at it from verse 4. Galatians chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 4. Remember, eternal life only in the Son, sonship only in the Son. You become a child of God, you become forgiven, reconciled to God only through the blood of Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth, tell me, his son made of a woman made under the law look at verse 6 and because he has sons God has sent forth in the spirit of his son of his son into your hearts crying Abba Father, and that's why, as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you live by the faith of the Son of God, that's how redemption comes to you, that's how restoration comes to you, and that's how salvation comes to you. Look at chapter 2, verse 20, Galatians chapter 2, 
Galatians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. That's identification with Christ. So come to Christ. So come to Christ. You see, he was crucified because of me. That crucifixion that Jesus Christ had on the cross of Calvary, I should have been crucified. I was the guilty one. He just was a sacrifice that took away my guilt and my condemnation and he bore my punishment. In that identification, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Somebody dare say, Christ liveth in me. Can I hear you? Look up here. Somebody goes out and he stole. And then they caught him. Say, eh, eh, don't do anything to me. It's not me. Christ liveth in me. Is that right? They caught somebody, committed fornication, adultery, and they called him. Were well, you the one that defiled uh, this uh, girl here? Uh uh, before you say anything. Not me. The life I now live, Christ liveth in me. Is that right? Somebody changed receipt. And then they said, look at what you have done. This retreat was tampered with. He said, yes, I know it was tampered with. Who did that? Christ liveth in me. Is that true? No. If Christ lives in us, he gives us righteousness. He gives us transparent life. He gives us purity. And gives us a life that is free, free from sin, that is free from all the atrocities cities of the world. Look at this again. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That's him there, that's him there. I live by the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We have to understand that that life comes through Christ. And that uh, righteousness comes through Christ. And it's as we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we experience that freedom and that righteousness. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 14. Remember, we have life in his son. We have eternal life in the son of God. The son of God who loved us, gave himself for us, and died for us on the cross of Calvary. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. For he is our peace, who has made was one. And has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God, both the Jew and the Gentile, both the white and the black, both the men and the women, both the young and the old, that he might reconcile both unto God. And it says, in one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And he came and preached peace unto you, which were afar off Gentiles, and to them which were near Jews, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, we have access unto the Father by the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at Second Corinthians chapter 5. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, when you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, look at what happens. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, therefore, because of what Christ has done, therefore, because of your believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, therefore, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I'll be a new creature. I am a new creature. 
because I'm in Christ. You know, the people that still live like they used to live. They lie like they used to lie. They fight like they used to fight. And they steal like they used to steal. They commit adultery, fornication, than like they used to commit fornication in the past. And they say, I'm now a member of the body of Christ. I'm now in Christ. That's a lie. That's a lie. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. And it says, look at this. Old things have passed away. And then it says, behold, tell me. Tell me, tell me. How many things become new? Uh, you know, somebody says, if you knew me before, you will know that you know something has happened. I used to smoke 10 packets of cigarettes every week. Now I only smoke one packet of cigarettes. All things have not become new. I used to fight everywhere. Now I don't fight everywhere. I only fight with the boss conductor. Uh -uh. All things have not become new. It says, if any man be in Christ... Am I talking about somebody here today? If any man be in Christ, if any woman be in Christ, it's a new creature. She's a new creature. And then he says over here, it says, old things pass away. And behold, tell me the rest. All things have become new. I pray that that newness and that new life will be in you in Jesus' name. We're coming back to First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. And I'm reading now from verse 11. First John chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 11. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. You see that? This is the record, an unchangeable record, a record that is testified about from heaven. It says, this is the record that the almighty God himself has confirmed and affirmed. It is a record that God has given to us eternal life. What's eternal life? Heavenly life. What's eternal life? A life that is forever. What's eternal life? The very life of God. It says God has given us his own life. Eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that has the son has life. Talking about your life. And he that has not the son of God. Tell me. Has not life. He may have religion. He doesn't have eternal life. He may have what he calls good works. He doesn't have eternal life. He may have whatever it is, the power to pray. I pray, I pray, I pray. Uh -huh. We're talking about eternal life. If you pray, pray, and pray, and you don't have the Son of God, you're not born again. You're not a child of God. If you don't have eternal life, then what's the use of the prayer? He that has the Son, capital S, has life. And he that has not the Son of God has not life. Look at verse 13. These things have I written unto you. These things have I written unto you. That believe on the name of the Son of God. That ye may know that ye have eternal life. He said, I'm writing this to you for only one purpose. I'm giving you the word for only one purpose. And the whole Bible, the word of God, is given to us for only one purpose. That she may know there is eternal life. That she may know you can have that eternal life now. That she may know you can maintain and remain in that eternal life until you see the Lord face to face. And then he goes on and says that she may believe on the name of of the Son of God. The reason why the scriptures are given to us, and the reason why this study has come to us, and the reason why we're reading any part of the Bible is so that you may have eternal life. I'm looking at John chapter 6. John, Gospel according to John chapter 6, and I'm reading here from verse 66. 
From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. There are some people that start the race and they don't finish. I will finish. Some people die by the wayside. I will not die by the wayside. Some people end their journey, their pilgrimage halfway. I will not end my own halfway. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. But these ones, they went back. Look at verse 6 to 7. And ye then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? And I'm going to say the same thing to you. Will ye also go away? Ah, an usher did something to me in the church. Uh, one of the workers did something to me in the church. Pastor, if you know what they did to me and what they said about me, that's why I'm going away. Huh? I pity you. You're going away into darkness, hellfire. Will you also go away? You know, somebody said, uh, you know, for some time I've got certificate and then there's no job. And even to eat is a terrible thing. It's very difficult for me. And so I don't know whether I want to continue again or not. Will you also go away? I will not go away. I said I will not backslide. I will not forsake the Lord. Some people went away because they said, that's too hard, that's too tough, that's too difficult. And so Jesus said to the twelve, will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast, tell me, the words of eternal life. Only Jesus has that. Only Jesus has that. Thou hast the word of eternal life. And because you know that Jesus has the word of eternal life, that's why you will never go away from the Lord in Jesus' name. We're looking at John chapter 20. John chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 31. John chapter 20, verse 31. It says, but these things are written. You see that? The reason why he has given us the word, what the almighty God has permitted this word to be written and given to us is for a purpose. Look at this. And these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have, tell me, life through his name. That believing, when you hear the word of God, and you believe that she might have life through his name. We're looking at John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I'm reading here from verse 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. It tells us, my sheep hear my voice. That's like saying, my sheep hear my word. And I know them, and they follow me. I will follow the Lord. And I give unto them, tell me, eternal life. That's the only person that can give eternal life. Jesus Christ. You need to turn away from your sin. Turn away from religion. And come to Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, I believe. There's no eternal life any, any place else, anywhere else. Only you can grant me. Only what you can give me eternal life. And therefore, I come to you. That's why it says, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. And they shall never perish. Eternal life. When well, you have eternal life, and they shall never perish. And then it goes on to say, Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Look up here. Who is powerful enough to pluck you out of the hand of Jesus Christ? I want to hear you. Okay, okay. When something happens between you and so and so, between you and Madam so and so, between you and Mr. so and so, and you say, because of that thing that happened, between Mr. so and so and myself, Madam so and so and myself, I will not. Believe on the Lord Jesus anymore. Because of this, persecutor, because of this, and oppressor, 
because of this, an adversary. Because of this, that person is a backslider. And then did something to you. You allow somebody to pluck you out of the hand of the father. But no man will pluck me away from the father. Nobody in the church. Nobody outside the church. Nobody in our house. Nobody in our school. Nobody in our college. Nobody in my office. And nobody anywhere will pluck me out of the hand of the Father. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. And then it says, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Read verse 30, 1, 2, 3, go. I and my father are one. As the father has power, the son has power. And the power of the Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Nobody will pluck you out of the father's son. I'm looking at John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I'm reading here from verse 2. John chapter 17 verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, and that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. You cannot have eternal life if you don't come to Christ. But as the Father calls you, and then as you come, as you repent, and then you come to Jesus Christ, and you accept him to be your Savior and your Lord, and say, now he is mine. He lives in my heart, and I live with him, and I abide in his word. It is that ability is that possibility and it is that reality of living with him and abiding in his word that's what grants you eternal life look at this again verse 2 as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him and this verse 3 is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I pray that your life will abide in you forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. We're reading from verse 7. Romans chapter 2, verse 7. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing, Seek for glory and honor and immortality. What follows? Eternal life. Just after you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and patiently, perseveringly, you keep on following the Lord and you say, I'll never leave him. I'll never forsake him. Because he has promised me to. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. I'll abide in him. I'll stay with him. It says, when that happens, and you continue with the Lord in godliness and righteousness, it says that eternal life will be secured in your life in Jesus' name. Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, reading from verse 5. Titus chapter 3, we're reading from verse 5. Not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. According to his mercy, he saved us. According to his love, the love that sent Jesus Christ to the cross of Calvary to die for us. According to that love, according to that compassion, according to that mercy, he saved us. Then it says, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, he washes all our sins away, takes all our sins away, and we are cleansed. 
and were purged. We were now new and were renewed because of the renewal of the Holy Ghost in our hearts. He goes on to say, which shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen to verse 7. That being justified by what? By his grace. Not of works, it's of grace. It's of his mercy. It's of his love. That he has now justified us. He's counted us pure, righteous. Counted us without any guilt. Because he justified us by his grace. We shall be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You see how many scriptures we have read today talking about eternal life and when you have the son of God, you have that eternal life. You have faith in the son of God, you have that eternal life. You come out of your sin, you come to the Lord, you have eternal life and then you allow Christ to live strong inside you that every step you take, everywhere you go, everything you say, you allow the grace of God to walk mightily in you so that the life of Christ will be reflected in your life that's eternal life and i pray if you have not got that eternal life tonight is your night as you call upon the name of the lord whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved that means shall be forgiven that means shall have eternal life and then if you've got that eternal life you'll recommit yourself to the lord again and say lord i will never go back i will never turn back i will not finish my journey halfway i'm going to follow the lord till the end so that with eternal life in me now and christ waiting for me in heaven when i reach there i'll need before the Lord and say thank you Lord you gave me eternal life and here I am in heaven I will live together forever in heaven forever with the Lord we shall be forever with the Lord we shall dwell because we have faith in him he lives in us he abides in us and we abide in him these things have I reaching unto you? And this six have I taught you today that believe on the name of the Son of God that she may know that she have eternal life and that she may believe on the name of the Son of God. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. And that eternal life will abide in you in Jesus' name. We'll rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord. Eternal life, eternal life, eternal life will abide in you. If you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, this is a great opportunity for you. Because without Christ, you cannot be saved. Without Christ, you cannot be saved. Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe. You sent Jesus Christ to die for me. I believe. And then eternal life comes in and the spirit of God will be a witness in your heart that now you are saved and because he lives inside you new life, new behavior, new character you'll manifest because of that eternal life that abides in you